Hey everybody, uh, so I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to talk at you for a little while. Uh, I'm not going to do any painting or anything or any games. Um, so, hobby companies behaving badly. Uh, if you don't know what's going on with uh, GW right now, um, GW is, they're starting like a streaming service like their own version of like Netflix or Hulu or, or, or whatever. Um, and uh, they're going after people who do like 3D printing. Um, they, they've had this kind of relationship for a long time with um, the, the first they went after animation. And, uh, and animation and 3D printing, those, those things, it makes a little bit more sense, but they're also going after people who do like lore uh, videos, uh, content on YouTube and stuff like that. So 3D printing, it is like an existential threat to Games Workshop because obviously their, their miniatures are expensive and you can 3D print your own proxy models for pennies compared to what their, their models cost. And they want to protect their IP. So the same thing is true with animation. They've, they've gone out and they've uh, bought out a lot of the, the people who do animation on uh, YouTube, like, um, uh, one of a famous, one of the, um, shit, what's his name? He'll come back to me. Um, but they, they've gone out and they, they, they bought out, uh, animators and it makes a little bit, it makes a little bit more sense for them to go after animation because it's their intellectual property. A space marine doing an animation of a space marine is is their intellectual property. It's like Disney going after uh, somebody on YouTube who's making their own Aladdin shorts, um, <laughs> if, if that makes sense. But um, they're also going after people who make lore content. And it seems really, really counterintuitive what they're doing because um, these people are, I would say that if you're a content creator on YouTube and you're making like one of the, um, one of the famous people is um, Arch, uh, Arch Warhammer, or it used to be called Arch Warhammer just to change his name to Arch, because uh, YouTube is shutting him down. Um, he used to do lore videos and um, there's lots of channels that all they do is just is, is Warhammer lore. So they, they're specifically going after them in animation uh, because they want to have that on their own streaming service. And uh, so they're, you know, kind of wringing the, the blood out of the, the rock that is the fans and uh, shutting down fan channels things that are focused on animation and lore. And me and my friend, we're, uh, we're talking about how, you know, originally it was just the animation channels. And, and then we're like, oh, you know, they're going to come for lore next. And then they're going to come for, like, bow reports and stuff like that. You know, I'm painting videos. They're going to come for the painters. Um, so probably not, you know, they're probably not going to come after the, uh, the people who do like battle reports and stuff like that. And they're probably not going to come after people like me who do like painting videos and stuff like that. Well, we were talking about doing, um, you know, we, w we want to do more game content, like more battle reports and stuff like that. And, and obviously that that's what I do here is I do, I do a lot of painting videos, you know, miniature painting videos. And I do like GW's miniatures. I think they're really superb quality and they're, you know, they're beautiful. And uh, I, I'm, 
you know, I, I went through like a pretty bad breakup with the company because I thought that they were just, there was lots of things that I did that I thought they were just really being abusive to the, uh, to the players and the fans. And I thought that they kind of turned a corner, but it seems like they're going back to it. Um, but so there's a lot of people that are planning to boycott games workshops new streaming service uh warhammer plus and they're they're going to have the painting videos the lore videos the um animation and all that and it's all going to be on warhammer plus and it's going to be like seven dollars a month or whatever and then i think that you get a miniature one miniature every year uh an exclusive miniature so then you know, after that came out, there's a lot of people, and, and then the new Kill Team, there's, that's a whole other thing that kind of, it's like two, two steps forward, one step back, or two steps back. Um, but it also came out that um, Games Workshop has been treating its employees really poorly. Um, so, the, there's one, one person, um, Sophie Williams, who worked at uh, GW, she was uh, on maternity leave and um, her, uh, her job was replaced while she was gone. The, the manager who was in charge of her team kind of took over her duties, her job became redundant, she was uh, fired while she was on maternity leave, which is a scumbag thing to do, obviously. <laughs> um, James Hewitt, who started at GW as a rules writer was making about uh, 1900, or sorry, 19,000 pounds a year when he started as a, a rules writer and then got a raise to 20,000 pounds when he became a game designer at GW. And uh, 20,000 pounds for here in the U.S. is like $28,000. So that's like poverty line. You know, garbage men make more money. And, and this is a, you know, this is a, a game designer. It's the person who's in charge of making the product, you know, like the actual rules for the games. Uh, and, and then, you know, this is a multi-million dollar company in a first world country, you know, like England. Um, so the, there's, I'm, I'm going to stand in solidarity with other YouTubers and, and I, I think that we all, I mean, we're definitely fans. Like we're super fans. We're, we, we spread the, the, the love of the game and we, you know, we're just, we're, we're gaming evangelists. We're trying to get people into the hobby. We're trying to spread the love and, uh, you know, share the joy of miniature painting and all that to the masses. Um, but, um, so yeah, uh, we, we have decided we, we, we have kind of started, we're, we're in the works of starting another channel that's going to be just games. And then I think that, and then this channel is going to be, stay like a painting. And, uh, and making, you know, like crafting, like laser cutting and 3D printing and stuff like that. Um, but, um, so something else though that was interesting, and I'm late, I'm really late to the party on this one, but um, I thought this was kind of fascinating. Um, so if you don't know who AK, Inter AK Interactive is, they're the people who make, um, well, they're, they make all kinds of paints and all kinds of hobby products. Um, they, they make um, AB uh, Aptalon uh, 502. It's the, um, it's the, uh, the, the oil paints that are designed specifically for uh, miniature painters. Like they, they dry incredibly quickly and they're, they're densely pigmented. 
um, so they're, they're more suited to uh, miniature painting than painting on uh, canvas. And then they also make like streak and grime the, um, the enamel paint that everybody really likes. And, and so they don't just make acrylics, but they also make really high quality acrylics too. Um, they make, the, they, they have their own paint, they call it like third generation, um, I forget what it is, but their, their acrylic, um, I'm a huge fan. It's really, really good stuff. It's like, there's, you can thin it with rubbing alcohol, you can thin it with lacquer thinner, you can thin it with water, uh, you know, airbrush thinner. It, there's no tip drying with airbrush. Like, it's pretty amazing stuff. So, um, what they did, though, which is how, how these guys are behaving badly, uh, and, and like I said, I'm pretty late to the party on this one. I think that this actually happened in like September of last year. Um, and then uh, like Mick Jimenez, Mick Jimenez used to, um, he, his, his products uh, like Ammo used to be a part of AK Interactive too, and then he left. And I don't know if this has something to do with it. It's, um, I couldn't really figure it out like from the digging that I did. But um, the um, this is this is AK Interactive. This is published by uh, I think it is published by AK Interactive. It is, yeah. And then the um, the the editors are uh, Fernando Vallejo and uh, Enrique Royo. Like they're the they're the big guys. And then they're they're also big big guys at AK Interactive. Like um, Fernando Vallejo. Is not the Vallejo of Vallejo paints. They, they only do acrylics. It's a different Vallejo, you know, two, two Spanish companies uh, that do modeling products. But, uh, but AK, AK was started by Fernando Vallejo as one of the, the founders. So they do a magazine. The magazine is called uh, Damaged, Weathered, Weathered and Worn uh, Magazine. And uh, you can see like some kind of some of the stuff that they do here. Like this is the uh, the Mad Max car from um, Road Warrior. And uh, yeah, I guess Road Warrior and you know, uh, well it was in all of the, the Mel Gibson Mad Max movies. And we've got like a snow speeder that's like heavily weathered and um, but they, they, they gear themselves much more towards hyper-realism. Uh, like you can see with this little loader thing that there's like just specific amounts of like dirt on the, uh, on the tires and stuff, you know, and like there's everything is like, there's like chip paint and logos and it, it's definitely very like hyper-realistic. And they um, they kind of gear their marketing more towards um, like model railroaders, but specifically like much more towards people who do like hyper realistic like dioramas and uh, like military scale modelers and stuff like that. So in their magazine, um, they they do things that are like edgy and cool, you know. Like a like a snow speeder that's very uh, weathered and worn. Um, but what's what's also interesting is that in the magazine they don't just use AK products. They've got like Tania. I've seen them use Vallejo for things. Like here we've got you know some of their paint, the AK paints. Um, And then, but everything is like kind of edgy, you know, and cool. Like, um, we've got a, like a steampunk kind of diorama thing, but again, like very hyper-realistic. And, um, it, but this is like scratch built, like 3D printed kind of stuff. We've got a um a, a Chernobyl diorama 
And this is where it gets interesting because this is um, this is where they're sort of bordering on social commentary and and doing like kind of like uh, art pieces that are sort of more social commentary and uh, like depicting kind of environmental devastation and stuff like that. And uh, like here we've got the, uh, the Mad Max car, you know, definitely like edgy and cool, you know. Um, but, but very, very much like hyper realism, like how to get the best kind of like rust effects and like streaking, you know, like, like hyper realistic, uh, Mad Max car model. Um, but what they did was they, they did a book and apparently the book was a lot of things that were like too edgy. That's the, that's what they, the, the word that they use or no provocative. Provocative is the word that they use. So it's like a bunch of things that were too provocative. Do you make it into uh, the magazine? Like, that's what it seems like. So basically, um, Enrique Arroyo and uh, uh, Fernando Vallejo kind of approached a bunch of scale modelers like, like they would approach them for the magazine to do something that was a little bit more provocative. So you can see here on the cover, this is a condemnation, and uh, it's, it says, when modeling becomes art, and art is social commentary. There's just an 18 plus on the cover. There's no, no pictures of any of the skill models. And then on the back, this is uh, Article 1 of the, uh, the, human, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It says, uh, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. So, the book is not what pissed people off. <laughs> I read the book. I read it from cover to cover. It's not, it's not offensive. Um, I mean, you can judge for yourself. The way that they present these topics in the book itself is much more sensitive, and it is in a way that is much more like socially aware and less offensive. What really, really pissed people off was the ad campaign. Um, so the, what they did was they, and like they always do this, they, they have, you know, they have a YouTube channel and then they, um, they play like this dumb, heavy metal music, like they, they, they do it over all of their videos, whether it's like how to get realistic streaking mud and in, in rust, you know, on like some, some barrels or something. We can represent chips on edges with rust colored pencils. To do this, we moisten the pencil and apply on the selected areas, drawing the chips. Or, if they're advertising their campaign, which has scale models of concentration camps, the Rwandan genocide, um, an ethnic gentleman shooting up in a prison cell, uh, a dead child on a beach who, uh, who had tried to immigrate from, say, Turkey to uh, Italy or Germany or something. Um, and uh, originally it looks like there was e not one, but two scale models of concentration camps. Yeah, not one, but two. Two scale models of concentration camps. And then when they did the ads, 
They played their stupid heavy metal music over pictures of, of bodies getting bulldozed into a ditch. And like actual footage from, uh, like pictures from, from like concentration camps and uh, uh, the Rwandan genocide. And they're like, are you ready? You know, uh, so the, somebody did a very, very good job of scrubbing the internet of this stuff. I had to do some serious digging to even find this stuff. Um, so, <laughs> um, first off, like I couldn't find any, I couldn't find the actual videos. All I could find was like, um, uh, GIFs that, that sort of played snippets of the video that was captured and then it was put up on M Imgur. And like I found um, images that were used in the, in the ad campaign. Uh, there was like a, a, a little press, press thing, like a, you know, an ad that they did on Facebook. Um, and then the, uh, the ad on, on Facebook, and then this, this might really piss you off, uh, trigger, trigger warning. So the, the ad that they did on Facebook, they said the harsh reality, and I have screenshots of this. Um, are you ready? Okay. September 3rd, 2020 was when this, so it was, yeah, yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, it was last year, September. Um, so four grams of Zyklon B, a pesticide made from cyanide, largely used in prison camps at Auschwitz and or or Oranienburg. I'm saying that right. Are enough to cause a dreadful death. Jews, gypsies, gays, and every individual who showed any hint of dissidence in front of the Aryan postulates the right candidates for confinement and extermination, just like a plague of insects and rodents. Pretty, uh, pretty spicy. During the Nazi barbarism years, all those people were considered subhuman beings who had to be erased from the world. They were not women, men, or children anymore. They were infectious rats who were putting in danger the German utopia and had to be treated as rats. How do we deal with rats? Using poison, of course. That's, that's word for word, that was in an ad. The, you know, this is advertising their book for, for like modeling products. Like you can't, you can't talk about human beings like that. Um, you know, I, I, I get that. They, and then, and then this, this is something that there was a lot of people who, uh, when I was like looking around doing research on this stuff, um, there was a lot of like hobby kind of vlogs and stuff, you know, and people who do like podcasts and, and, and they said things that I totally agreed with. They said, um, you know, if you went over to a friend's house and then you saw them doing a scale model of a, of a concentration camp, you know, you'd be like, is everything, is everything okay? You know, at home, like, are you, are you all right? Do we, you know, is there anything that we can do like to, you know, help? And, uh, so here's, but this is the interesting thing, right? So it looks like in the original version of the book, there was a scale model of a gas chamber. And then part of what they advertised in this ad campaign was how to model a canister of Zyklon B. That's, that's what, that's why they, that's where this little delicious soundbite comes from, uh, about how you know, Jews are, are rats and then you use poison to kill rats. Um, yeah. So, but in the book, and we're going to get into this, I'm going to, I'm going to specifically, I want to, 
I want to talk about the the ones that really piss people off uh, because there's you know there's 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 kind of a lot in here there but the uh, the ones that really really piss people off was about the Rwandan genocide the the, the skill model of the uh, the the concentration camp and uh, let's see the the one uh, the one where the, the guy is shooting up. And immigrants dead on a beach. So, but that's it. But, you know, and I'm going to get into this. Um, the book itself is much more sensitive. It's, it's, it treats the, the subject matter in a much, much more sensitive way. Uh... Like, they don't talk about people as vermin. And, and when, when, when the ad campaign came out, the retribution was swift and fierce. Like, hobby, hobby stores were pulling their products. Uh, Amazon pulled their products for a while, it looks like. And they're, they're selling their products again because they got the book off of Amazon. And I looked, and they're selling, you know, AK's products again um but but so yeah i thought that we should actually look at the uh the models themselves because okay like if you're if you're if you're steven spielberg you know you could get away with doing a scale model of a concentration camp you know just as a hobby um, if you're anybody else, like, like, it's like, it's like, you know, if you, if you, if you walk past, um, if you see like a bunch of black guys like playing basketball and you walk past them and you hear them use the N word, you don't say that word. Like that's their word. You just, you just don't, you don't use that word. You just let them have it, you know? And like, I might even piss a few people off just now, just talking about this stuff, but, um, just, you know, just, just, like, keep going, just don't worry about it, you know, don't use that word, it's their word, and, like, it's the same thing when you're doing the scale model of a, of a concentration camp, but the guy who did the scale model, um, he's talking, he was talking about how he was so moved by a, um, uh, a, an exhibit at a Holocaust museum. And the one that actually made it into the book, the, the, one, the one with the gas chamber was, was not put in, thank God. The one that actually made it in was a, um, it's, a, it's a much more tasteful, and I feel like it's much more emotionally moving and, but yeah, I thought that we should talk about that. So, all right, you stuck around for this long. If you want to see, it, if you want to look at the book, let's look at the book. All right, let's talk about the book. Uh, so yeah, I've already gotten into what the theme is and, um, what the book is about. And um, so one thing I forgot to mention was that AK Interactive immediately took down the videos. That's part of the reason why it's so hard to find um, information about the book or, or the ad campaign itself. The book has obviously been published. I have it in my hands. Um, and then um, so basically a lot of what they're saying is that scale modeling is, isn't, is a form of media. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's artwork, uh, whether it's music or film or photography, uh, media is a form of expression and, uh, a way to represent ideas. And like, if, 
if this was a book by some artist who had like survived the Holocaust or something, and then it was a bunch of Holocaust paintings, um, if it didn't advertise their products, I don't think that people would even have had as much of a problem with it. The, the book playing heavy metal music over pictures of the Holocaust, that is like, what on earth were you thinking? That is so tasteless and so offensive. Um, but let's talk about the actual model itself. So, um, <clears throat> the, the, the guy who, who did this piece, um, let's see, where is it? He, he mentions that he, uh, was at, um, this Burden of Sorrow, that's what this one is called. So he mentions that he visited a, a Holocaust uh, museum, a memorial in uh, Washington, D.C. And uh, he talked about how much it moved him. Um, and if I'm being honest, um, I think that this piece... I mean, obviously they, they show like how he modeled like piles of clothes and yeah, I mean, the, so the piles of clothes are, are, are meant to represent people and this, you know, this person who is, is pushing a cart full of clothes and he, his, um, you know, his, his life, which is cleaning up after this, uh, you know, cleaning up the evidence of this, of this genocide. And we all know what happened in the concentration camps. But to me, um, I find this much more moving. I find it much more the, the narrative of the piece and the way that it's presented is so much more powerful to me and, and moving than showing a gas chamber. And the idea of modeling a can of Zyklon B, I, I just, I, I can't imagine what they were thinking. I don't, I'm, I don't have a problem with making a diorama that is a memorial to the Holocaust. Um, and, and I think that that's a perfectly, if you went to a museum and you saw a diorama like this, I think it presents, it's very, it, it is very tasteful and it, and it elicits a strong emotional response. And, um, I think that that's, if that's what, if that's what they were intending to do is to, you know, bring across the, the feeling of despair and sorrow that this person must have felt, you know, pushing all of these remnants of human beings around inside of a concentration camp, then it definitely comes across and it's much more emotionally effective than showing the inside of a gas chamber and modeling the inside of a gas chamber. But that's my, my personal opinion. All right. And this is the other one that really pissed people off. Um, so, and then, like I said, you know, I read through the book and the book itself, it treats these, it treats these atrocities in a much more respectful manner. Um, there are, you know, there are pictures of these, these, you know, mass graves, horrible atrocities being committed. And these people whose job it is to, uh, throw, throw bodies into a ditch and cover them up. And, and then that's what the, um, the diorama is. Um, this is the actual diorama. And one of the things that really kind of pissed people off was the, they mentioned that in, in the, the scale modeling, um, <clears throat> that the person who, who modeled the, uh, the body bags, he talks about how he had to use, um, dog poop bags because using like regular size trash bags, vinyl trash bags, 
was out of scale. And, um, you know, obviously it's a very convincing diorama and I think it would, you know, it would have a place in a museum in some kind of memorial to this happening. And that the, the purpose of like memorials and museums is to make sure that people don't forget that these kinds of horrible atrocities actually happen. And the, 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 he talks about how when he was modeling the body bags originally, he had these um, pieces of cloth that the, um, the bodies were wrapped in. And, he, and, and then he felt like it was just too colorful and too happy. And then he had, uh, you know, a, um, a, like a front loader in the diorama originally. And um, that he, he felt like it took, took the human element out of it, that it was just too industrial uh, of a look. And um, he, he wanted to, to bring the human element back into it. So he, and then that's part of the story is these, these two uh, characters who are, um, there's, it's documented that, you know, these, these people, that was some of the only work that they could actually get at the time was uh, covering up um, dead bodies during the genocide. So this is the final model. And again, I think it's pretty tastefully done. And, the, and this is not just an ad for their products. It's, you know, it's a, it's a scale model of a horrible atrocity. And it also, um, like one of the things that I've heard other people say is that as gamers, we tend to get detached from the horrors of war. Like when we're, when we're playing games, like if you're, if you're playing two sides of a game, somebody is like, it's always, it's, it's fantasy and we get detached from fantasy violence. And then we forget that things like this are real consequences of, uh, of war. But I, again, I think it's a pretty uh, powerful, moving diorama, and it definitely elicits a, a strong kind of emotional response. And then there, there is a lot of human element to it. And then there's a, there's a, that you you get these characters' feelings. It comes across, you know, the the despair and the uh, their feelings. Okay, another uh, scale model that really pissed people off. <laughs> this one is about uh, drugs and uh, drug addiction. So, uh, yeah, I mean, again, you know, we have real pictures of real addicts shooting up in the, uh, in the book. And, um, but, uh, but it also, it, you know, it, it comes from the heart. These, uh, the person who did this scale model, he um, talks about, how uh, they, you know, they give some statistics about in here, like 585,000 people died to illegal drug use in uh, two, 2017. And, um, you know, it's a, um, it's a billion dollar industry. Um, or yeah, the illegal trade of heroin moved 300,000 uh, or yeah, 300,000 uh, million Spanish pesetas every year, more than 1,800,000 euros. Um, and that's, again, this is a Spanish company, so. But the, uh, the model, I don't, th I don't know, you know, I, it's, um, so this is, this is kind of a, like a commentary on addiction and, and drug use and sort of the, um, the relationship between the, the prisoner and then the, the prison of his own making and how um, drug use kind of like puts you in, in a hole and uh, yeah, but um, Again, 
so they somebody made the comments, you know, like why is why is he Hispanic? Um, well, it's a Spanish. The the modeler is is Spanish. And you know they they mentioned that it could happen in uh, Northern Ireland, or you know it could happen in uh, the prison of Seville. <clears throat> but uh, but yeah, they um, there they I think that there was a plan to sell these figures at some point. Like you could buy you could buy your own junkie um, and paint him. But you know, I I do I do think that the model was tastefully done, and it's it's expertly painted, and it's you know, uh, it it's definitely social commentary, and if you wanted to learn how to model a prison cell, they they definitely do a good job of it. You be to judge and tell me if you're offended or not. I really am interested to see what you guys say about this, what you think of this stuff. And the uh, the last one that really made people angry. Um, the uh, this one is about mass migration and um, how. Well, this is part of the the diorama. This is a this is a Libyan child of Kurdish origin, and uh, he drowned on a Turkish beach in uh, 2015. Both his mother and his brother were dead as well, and 12 people of uh, Syrian origin, and all of them had intended to reach the uh, Greek coast. So the the model itself is a it's a scale model of a real event. Um, that happened in Greece, and um, the, you know, again, this this really happens, and sometimes things like this get swept under the rug. Like it's it's easy for people to say, "Oh, that's offensive. It doesn't happen," um, but it does. And uh, and here's the diorama, um, and obviously it has a dead child in it. So somebody had to model a dead child, and then there's what could be one of his parents. Um, but I, I do, I think it's emotionally powerful and it's emotionally moving. Uh, and it does call attention. It, it calls attention to something that's, uh, that's horrible. And, uh, so one thing, one thing that I did want to say about that is that when I was in art school, um, that we, we talked about the theory of aesthetics and how art doesn't always have to be beautiful. Or sometimes it can be beautiful, but it can also be disturbing. And it can be, uh, or it can, but the idea is really to elicit an emotional response. And this definitely does that. You know, a, a dead child, there's no reason for why a child should have to die. But um, I, I think that the book actually treats things in a much more sensitive manner. And if you're going for hyper-realism in scale modeling, it doesn't get much more realistic than this. And I think that with the subject matter even, that <clears throat> it lends itself to the subject matter because it's very real. But obviously, this person had to scale model a dead child. All right, guys, that's going to be it. <clears throat> but uh, I'm not going to get into the whole book. And I just kind of wanted to touch on some of the things that really made people angry and why I'm personally not offended by this book. Um, I, you know, maybe I'm being cold and insensitive, but 
um, I kind of wanted to just see it for myself. And uh, I think that it does, it does treat the subject matter sensitively. And um, it's, uh, it's obviously, you know, expert level scale modeling, the type of stuff that would belong in a museum or some kind of exhibit to call attention to the stuff. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.